ladies and gentlemen, and variations thereof, welcome to the Selective Lorecast, a casual Elder Scrolls podcast. My name is Rotten Deadite, and with me today are... Um, I'm assuming this is me first, and I haven't actually checked the order. Oh, so you job. do your job, and it all fails. <laughs> I do the only thing I have to do. <laughs> I was waiting. I, That's I'm James, James, also known also as Arimithius. <laughs> yes, thank you. And I am Felix, also known as Banu Hanamasaishi. And I am Lejavion, also known as Icefire Warden or Al Hator. Uh, and uh, if, if you've been watching this cast or listening to this cast for very long, you'll know that every time Periide comes up, we run for the hills to find IFW. Uh, <laughs> and we're, we're really glad he's here. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, and that, because that's what we're talking about today is Periite. Um, Periite being a, uh, a, a, a Daedra you don't hear about too often. Um, thankfully, he's in basically every mainline game, and he does have a good amount of activity in uh, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, but compared to other. Uh, let's, okay. Compared to Shiagorath, there's barely anything happening with him. Um, yes. one thing I do want to mention before we do all this is I just want to put insert my little pet peeve here and say that Periot is also a great example of what an actual dragon looks like and not a goddamn wyvern. Skyrim. <laughs> As if this Four wasn't and nerdy wins. enough, you just had to get that in there. Oh, yes. oh I just want to turn the, oh, it bugged me so much. Those aren't fucking dragons. Um, anyway, no. uh, cause I'm that nerd. I'm that nerd. Anyway, um, so Periite mm -hmm. is a uh, I, um, some one of the thing, one of the sort of like titles that likes to be assigned. By the way, he's got a bunch of titles and they're hilarious. Um, the Taskmaster, which I think is fantastic, which refers to uh, Periite's sort of domain of like the um, what I guess you could call the sort of functionality of um, the little stuff, you know. Like sort of, um, if you imagine, if you imagine how uh, your entire high school would have fallen apart if there wasn't a janitor cleaning up the place, that's kind of the way I think of Periite. He's 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 like he's the oh you know what he is he's the uh, um uh, he's the uh, w w what was the term they were using for them um, uh, the essential worker of, <laughs> of Elder Scrolls. <laughs> he's he's the person who the entire world would fall apart without. He's the Daedra that the entire world would fall apart without, but he's also the least respected. Um, and, uh, irritatingly. So, um, also, uh, the Blighted Lord, the Lord of Infection and Pestilence, the Bringer of Disease and Pestilence, the Lord of Natural Order, the Daedric Prince of Pestilence, the Master of Tasks, and because Zenimax Online Studios employs, uh, Tuttle, who will not be und uh, who will not be outdone by anyone, the Lord of Abundant Puss and Bountiful bo <laughs> Vomit. <laughs> hmm. So, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um... <laughs> I really, really appreciate Periite because he's uh, like I, I do this rant very often, and especially during the Daedra Daedric princes. But he's one of those princes who represents what I consider to be a fundamental function of reality, which is uh, the idea of yep. pestilence and infection. And um, the first thing that I want to start with, uh, in an effort to completely derail the conversation. Oh, by the way, I forgot to get to the mail. Um, yeah. I just realized, James, I forgot to do the mail. We're actually supposed to do that first. So you know what? Casual yeah. podcast. Casual. Let's yeah. just do the mail. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that intro. Let's just do the mail. <laughs> um, we got yep. sent a mail by, I hope he doesn't mind me using his name, Jake Sanghara, mm -hmm. which is probably dead ass wrong, but I'm going to go with that anyway who um, I'm going to summarize because it's a very good email with a lot of stuff in it and a lot of really good questions. Uh, but uh, he was asking, uh, he, was, he was replying in response to our uh, question about the failed and anti-morphic event between Clavicus Vile Mephala and Nocturnal, and we were having trouble deciding whether or not Skyrim's main quest line had an anti-morphic event or not. And uh, Jake feels that it does, and his argument's pretty good, which is that uh, for the base game, as it stands currently, Alduin is the king, Parthenax is the rebel, and our dragonborn is the witness. Um, that's an interesting interpretation. There's a lot more to this. I'll get to it. But the first thing I want to start with is uh, the idea of the player being the witness and not the prisoner, which the intro to almost every Elder Scrolls game would tell you that the player is a, is a prisoner, not a witness. 
And in some cases, like for example, Morrowind, very hard to argue otherwise. But for games like Oblivion and Skyrim, it starts to make more sense. I think we've made the argument before, I think, that Oblivion, uh, the main character, can be interpreted as being the uh, observer and not the, not the prisoner. And I think you can say similar things for uh, The Last Dragonborn, which is unfortunate, in my opinion. Um, since I'll do, but in this particular case, I'll do it as a king, and I don't think many people are going to argue with that. Um, I mean, you could, but I mean, you know, you could argue with anything, but, <laughs> but I think in this particular, in this particular triad, um, Alduin is probably the king. That's fine. Parthenax as the thief. Well, I mean, who else is it going to be guys? Uh, I would argue that, um, the last dragonborn with Parthenax as the witness. Yep. Because Parthenax is choosing to help you become what you are meant to be, um, and so on and so forth. So and Parthenax... potentially gets potentially gets killed for his trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Betrayed, yeah. if you will. Yes. By the thief. Um, yes. And I, I have to say that probably the crux of Jake's argument is that Parthenax fits the um, fits the thief role. Because mm -hmm. he's acting, uh, well, uh, let's see here. Uh, Parthenax is the rebel because if he is still alive, he will become the new voice for dragons to follow the way of the voice, whether they wish to hear it or not. This can arguably end up being the requisite betrayal, and we should become the king, but Parthenax steals it like a thief from us. This is an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. um, because Skyrim doesn't really have, in my opinion, a proper ending for The Last Dragonborn... Um, th it does make sense that Parthenax will at that point take over the, because Parthenax seems to be basically saying, I'm going to take over teaching Thum, uh, or really, if you think about it, kind of continue to teach Thum, since he's been just, influencing the Greybeards for some time. He's just taking a different bunch of freshmen. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... And there's definitely, I will say that, I will also say this in favor of this argument, there is a, it's hard to tell exactly what, it's, well, it, you can, you can make arguments, but it's hard to get a really firm grasp of what it is exactly that The Last Dragonborn gains at the end of Skyrim, if not just the ability to continue living, because Alduin isn't destroying the world. Um... It's just, it would be a, a little bit, it would be a little, it would be a much more clear-cut argument if the the Last Dragonborn was actually gaining something. But, um, anyway, um, if Parthenax is dead, I still, he, uh, uh, Jake continues, if Parthenax is dead, I still think there should be an enantiomorph within the ro roles being Alduin as a king, the Dragonborn as a thief, and Oda Ving being the witness, with the requisite betrayal being Oda Ving taking us to Nordic ruin. Um, my reason for making Oda Ving the witness is this voice line, watching the skies for Alduin's return or yours, depending on the Dragonborn, which does make a lot of sense. Oda Ving does seem to be the witness for, at the very least, the last, um, fight, the last encounter between, um, the last Dragonborn and Alduin. Although, that line also sounds like he doesn't know what the answer is going to be. And the witness not knowing the answer feels a little dicey. Well, and, and also the, you know, the sort of enantiomorphic principle of the two towers, one and one, uh, being completely indiscernible is important there. Maybe Odoving is saying, I can't tell the difference between you and Alduin. Yeah, one of you is going to show up and I don't know who, who it's going to be. You know, I won't be able to tell. So maybe the answer lies with how the main quest ends uh -huh. with Odaving and I think other dragons responding to the death of Alduin. Uh -huh. Who do they declare king? Is it the Dragonborn or Parthernax? That's a good question. I don't know if they do. Mm. They still attack you afterwards. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> they're, they're still running around being pissy. Yeah. So, so one assumes that it's neither. Really. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. 
that's Jesus interesting. Drake's ain't loyal. Yeah, it's it, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. if it was political, then it would be nice if we got that explanation. But it'd be nice yeah. if we got a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, what does this have to do with Perrier? None. We got an email. <laughs> yeah. We, we just want to answer someone's question to the best of our ability, which right yeah. now is proving to be like, hmm, this is actually a really good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I think the, the, the problem that Jake is dealing with is a problem that everybody who uh, tries to examine Elder Scrolls metaphysics reasonably closely runs into with Skyrim is that there isn't really a clear cut um, role that's uh, created and there isn't a very satisfying ending period but also there isn't like a very satisfying ending for that metaphysical uh conflict um there's a there there is an ending it's just with the main quest it just sort of peters out you know um and right. um, um and there's a lot of really good reasons for that uh i always 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 take the uh the meta you know, uh, um, feel and uh, and just end up uh, talking about things like budget, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. uh, like uh, I, I mean, the, a lot of game developers have said this in interviews. Very, very few people actually finish games. Um, if you actually look at the Steam uh, achievement statistics for Skyrim, you'll notice that uh, a shockingly low number of people completed the main quest. Um, it's hmm. under twenty percent, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah. It's very low. Right, um, but I think that also runs into a separate question. I don't want to get too off the rails here, but I think that also has to do with the fact that um, in RPGs, and also probably it might be a trend that's continuing, they don't really care if people make the main quest because the idea of an RPG is that it's supposed to be an open world, do whatever the fuck you want. So why put so much effort into a main quest if you know more people are going to want to do other things that would be sort of my mm -hmm. argument for why things feel a little short but to bring it back to what you were saying earlier about what the the last dragonborn gained um mm -hmm. from the the ending of the main quest if it's not you know being recognized as kingship or like lord of the dragons kind of thing um an argument could be made that what they gain is access to the halls of Sovngarde, no matter what. True. Okay, that makes sense, and that is accurate. So, they do tell you that they'll welcome you when you, when your time, when their time comes. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So it's kind of like that's not insignificant. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like hey, look, Lorcan gains a loyal soldier. Like it's. Mm -hmm. Well, which very weird, few, again, very few Nords can say that they know for <laughs> sure that they'll end up in the halls of Sovngarde when they die. Very few Nords can say that. Um, yeah, and, and if, especially if you're playing in 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 in, uh, in Skyrim, if you're not playing a Nord, that's <laughs> that's even more question, you know. Mm. Um, Matthew, you're right. Um, uh, Sixty percent of people think there's an, an anti morph, but it's actually just none. It's just a typical player character quest giver bad guy format that RPGs always take on. Yeah, that's. That's the best way to explain the enantiomorph is that it's a very basic legend telling structure. Um, it's like the heroic myth reduced all the way down, like boiled all the way down until there's like nothing left in the pot. That's the bare minimum requirement for a plot line is you've it's, got it's somebody who has something, leftovers. you've got somebody who wants that thing, and then you've got, but really, honestly, that could be it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Joseph Campbell with the serial numbers filed off. Oh, way filed off, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's um. And so yeah, Matthew, you're absolutely right. It's um. It, it's just a it's a basic storytelling structure, and um, that's one of the reasons why I like it so much is because uh. I mean, you know, like metaphysics and this kind of conversations. These are, as Kirk Bright put it, this is the game that we play between the games, and this is just <laughs> another. This is another fun thing for us to do, you know, and uh, in, in between yep. plot lines, uh, in between releases, I should say. And let's yep. face it, we've got quite a fucking long time before Elder Scrolls Six comes out, so. It's why the metaphysics has developed so much since <laughs> Skyrim, because we've had so much time to, to go down the rabbit hole. We're, we're so bored, Todd. Todd, yes. we're so bored. <laughs> Thank well, God for okay. ZeniMax, otherwise I'd be going out of my fucking mind. <laughs> I would also probably just be trying to craft way more Redguard lore, but anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. also, um, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, at, at some point we've eventually got to start calling this a Zen, a, an Elder Scrolls Online podcast because there's yeah. nothing else to talk about. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I really ought to just start 
seriously, really, really seriously taking apart Elder Scrolls Online lore because there's buckets of it, and I'm obviously not doing that, doing them a, a, a you know, a fair credit by uh, yeah. uh, because they've put tons of great work into that game, and I'm not doing a, a good service to them by yeah. um, by failing to read about it. That, that um, can be your resolution for the new year. Lord knows yes. this year is almost over. That's a good point. Um, yeah. What, <laughs> one one last thing though about um just as I've been mulling it over in my mind about um Parthenax and Alduin, Rebel King and Antiomorph. Um. Is there a distinction then between what happened in the past when Parthenax rebelled against Alduin and what happened, <laughs> you know, thousands of years in the future? with the with the dragonborn does that change anything at all because for sure if you look back in like the age of heroes and when they banish the dragons away alduin is for sure the king parthenax mm -hmm. is for sure the rebel <clears throat> and i guess if you want to make an argument for it um the people who uh banished alduin into time they're the collective witness maybe and they paid a price for it. like there there is a bit of an argument for that there yeah. Um, but then yep. in terms of the modern day, does that mean that Parthenax is the king having like taught um, upon Snowthroat and guided the Greybeards and then Alduin is actually the rebel in this instance because mm. he's come back to reclaim what was his. It's, yeah. Oh, it's the it's the rebel's return. It's the whole mm -hmm. thing that Naz originally put forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. And when. Right. And yeah. it's, yeah, so it, it's in fact, what's happening is that is that. Alduin is showing up before he's supposed to show up, or arguably before he's supposed to show up, maybe not, and uh, and trying to instead of eat the world, he's trying to rule the world. Yeah, which is not what he's supposed to be doing. Similarly, the rebel is not is a rebel because he's doing something he's not supposed to be doing. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 fuzzy. Um. And that's good news, really, because if it was really clear cut, then it would be boring. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's 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 stop wasting IFW's time and talk about Parrot. Yes. <laughs> um, the first thing yep. I want to run past you uh, uh, is um, a very basic question that I always like to bring up because there's a lot of arguments in a, mo a lot of different ways. But do, is there are there microorganisms in the Elder Scrolls universe? Uh, it's kind of implied. I know mm -hmm. that the uh, one of the reasons why it's uh, kind of in a more of a concrete idea is, is in one of the Lord Master archives they mentioned uh, Daedrons being a thing that exists in the Oblivion, mm -hmm. and they're kind of like these little mic. I'm guessing that they're like these little microscopic shit starters that kind of just yeah. rip open <laughs> realms and you know just cause you know bad shit to happen that you don't oh, want yeah. to happen in the Oblivion and Perry is the one that has to keep them in line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the the Elder Scrolls equivalent of Gremlins. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they were doing with that large Adron Collider. Um, <laughs> they're, they're all really just super tiny goblins that we can't see, and they're really <laughs> angry. <laughs> like <laughs> all the time, they're just pissed. Yeah. They're just cussing the Opus Storm the entire. I can see them now, just fucking with people's stuff. Um, and that's uh. Yeah. Uh, so, but, um, that actually, I'm, I'm glad you pointed out that it's Periot's job to keep them in line because that's one of the th cool things I think about Periot is that he's not the Lord of, I'm going to infect every, he's not Nurgle. I'm going to infect everything and cause all kinds of disease and shit. He's the, he's the taskmaster. He's the, he's the Lord of natural order. He's about, I mean, Nurgle's mm. all about order too, but he's all about counting, mm. you know, diseases until, you know, insanity. Um, but what's great about Periot is that he's about making sure that things happen properly. And sometimes infections are proper. Infections are needed. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, okay, do we have any example? Like, I'm trying to think, aren't we sort of microorganisms when we go into the Clockwork City? Uh, okay, that's a good question. But to bring it back to, to Periot and stuff for a hot second, um, mm -hmm. I really liked um, the Khajiit quest giver in skyrim and how he explains an aspect of periite's purpose which is that um when you have um a disease or wounds 
you know, when you're coughing, you're sputtering, you're dripping mucus, you're vomiting, you know, the pus is gross, but it's there for a reason because it's part of the healing process, right? right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it points mm -hmm. to how this sort of gross, um, sort of unsavory thing is actually vital to ultimate health. One cannot exist without the other. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool and worthwhile to point out. It kind of yeah. makes it seem like Perrier is not necessarily a bad Daedra, but a necessary Daedra. Exactly. And I also want to touch on the fact that beyond being the Taskmaster, but about the natural order, that again brings us to talk a little bit about Ifre or Jeffrey or however people like to pronounce <laughs> his name in a multitude of ways. Uh -huh. I've heard Joffrey once, mm. which oh, will no. haunt me forever. <laughs> and yeah, um, Yiffer. So Yiffer. Which again, if you're a furry, someone's ears mm. perked up. Anyway, yes. um, that again sort of strikes a chord of so who's really in charge of the natural order here? Is it Ifre who gave down his life to become one of the main earth bones to allow a natural order? Or is it Perriot who's saying, all right, I need this bacteria in this location by this day or else there's going to be hell to pay. Mm -hmm. It's it's an interesting concept. And so I'd love to mm -hmm. hear LJ's thoughts on that and that relationship. Well, a lot of things, a lot of people don't realize that Perriot is actually a nature god. Right? And he's yeah. okay. a... Because with the thing about the natural order, it's one of the things I've had to talk about in relation to in relationship to Jigalag a lot, because people get confused. Is that Periyte is more about equilibrium? He's yeah. kind of like the embodiment of karma in the universe. Mm. And one thing happens, mm. another thing has to happen. Yeah, he's both. Yeah. He's both the cause and the effect. Oh. So, if, sure that he does infect people as part of um, pestilence as part of his spear, but disease is just one way that he kind of goes about doing that hmm. in essence he's kind of like it's also one of the reason why he's also the god of task and ordering you know the lowest orders of oblivion because he has to make sure everything has a purpose everything that's done has to be for a reason it just can't be like spontaneous stuff hmm. Hmm. making yeah. sure making sure <clears throat> that the that the gears of the world continue to operate smoothly and are oiled pretty much yeah. It's um one of my favorite things Ooh. from ESO lately is the Reachman stuff. Yes. Where oh, it actually it. where if you um there's a series of book called The Great Spears of the Reach where they um talk about Namira, Hircine, Periyte, and uh Lorcon, or the Reachman call him Lork, which I am I'm going to always be fucking irritated about that because yeah. that, <laughs> that ruins the entire naming scheme of the god of man for the manus cultures. I don't mm. know why they gave him a elven name, but you know, that's an argument for another time. But they essentially form a kind of almost oversoul in the sense of life and death in Reachman culture. Mm. With mm -hmm. Lorcan being the god of death, and then Hirsing being the god of life in the sense. Namira being decay right. and then Periyte being the balance between life and death. Okay. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I'm I'm liking what you're putting out there. Also, I think I might be able to slightly answer why they gave an elven name is because I think it is established in the lore that the Reachmen sort of got their early magic start thanks to the Dereni and the Orcs. Oh, so that definitely might be the orcs why yeah. it comes from like an elven perspective mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at least in terms of of the name they're obviously a manish people and are of a more manish belief but they're apparently still kind of like under that cultural influence uh sphere i guess you could say mm -hmm. yeah the, would... um the orsinium i think dlc has um yeah. a lot of quests about the reachmen and how they've been kind of aping you know culture off of the orcs for like hundreds of years or something yeah and um, yeah. Um, yeah so that would make yeah. sense yeah and um i just want to get um my ears immediately pricked up with, with similar thoughts to tojiri uh, i'm not going to try and pronounce the rest of that um but to, <laughs> so, to, to, to someone in chat saying yes yes but she or um because mm -hmm. yeah because that's the that's the opposite the bretons are the opposite of the reachmen in that case because they've got a corruption of shore um, who they view negatively 
right. as opposed to a corruption of Lorcan, which is viewed positively. So, language. Re- Yay! Yay! <laughs> See, I would. Ex- I like that train of thought. I just can't mm. fully accept it because they kind of imply the Reachmen were actually cavemen. Right. So they yeah. really have a lot of early elven influence comparisons <sighs> to the yeah. Bredens who are actually more or less hybrids. They're, mm. they're basically yeah. trying to make the Reachmen more like actual oh. needs that just slowly inbred, like basically bred with other races over time while the yeah, Bredens just, are an actual coll- experiment. And just collected a whole bunch of cultural influences <clears throat> along the way. It basically gives, it gives the developers an excuse to say, well, the Reachmen think this, whatever, yeah. th- this being whatever cool thing the developers want to have at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the one of the fun things that I like. What uh, that I, I really enjoy when it ha- this happens in Elder Scrolls Online is every once in a while you have the opportunity to ask somebody about like you know like their culture or something, and they'll say something along the lines of, "Well, there's a very good answer to that, but uh, we don't talk to outsiders about it." Yeah. And it's kind of like the 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 lore writers equivalent of going, "Oh, I'm not going to touch that one," or "We'll talk we'll dis- we'll talk later," or something like that. It's like okay, okay, <laughs> you know, it's. <laughs> It's like, I'd love to tell you, but we're out of budget on voice acting. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, the, uh, I actually, uh, crap, who was it? Somebody, uh, oh, um, the idea of Par- Periad being the Akatosh in the next Kalpic cycle. Um, I've heard that somewhere before. Where mm-hmm. did I hear that? Was that? That's from a Oblivion Summoning Day, and I hate it. Or a Oblithia Summoning Day. And, oh, and you I hate it? I just like the idea. <laughs> like well, okay to, like i i can understand the hate for it i really can at the <clears> same <throat> time i do understand why there's people who like the idea or support it mm-hmm. because he is the taskmaster and what is the greatest task to manage but time yeah, right? yeah. like mm-hmm. i can i can get the That's... sort of causality of it mm-hmm. yeah but i understand how it's an affront to everything we know and understand <laughs> <laughs> about uh, Elder Scrolls lore, mm-hmm. and also I'm pretty sure Perry just took the form of a dragon, just as a giant fuck you to Akatosh. Was like, like, oh mm. what you you think you're some big dragon? Well, look, I'm a dragon, like so yeah. fucking what? Fuck you. Yeah. Well, uh, it's possible that's a little more deeper than that because yeah. years ago, you know, back when I was uh, a little bit more active, I, I was talking to MK about some stuff, and he's the one that originally told me that Perryite was the shadow of Akatosh. Mm-hmm. In the sense that he was kind of like, it's always interpreted as he's kind of like Akatosh, but if he actually, you know, did his job right, since Akatosh doesn't really know how to fucking do his job. But mm-hmm. he's really shit <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah. But if if you actually notice in a lot of the stuff that ESO is just slowly pumping out about Hirsi and the Mira and their relations with Yifri and um, Lorcan is that they're also shadows of those gods as well. Like, here's seen as the yeah. shadow of Yifri. Namira was literally basically born when Lorcan died. Mm-hmm. And it's... And the fact that they have Namira and Hirsin and um, Lorcan as their free great spirits alongside with Periyte, and then in their culture, they attribute him with time and draconic energy and being the god of order and hierarchy which is what the elves do with Oriel or Alkosh and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little interesting idea that they basically worship the, basically gods that were, that became into existence after the four main principles were already set for the world. Yeah. Um, Actually, this is, um, uh, Matthew just linked in chat, um, Great Spirits of the Reach Volume 4, which suggests... That um, Periot's role in the Reach in Reach society mimics that of Akatosh and Adric faiths in many crucial ways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an yes. interesting. I so that that's kind of another parallel there, but yeah, um, yeah, because they, their spheres overlap. Because um, mm-hmm. if Periot is associated with natural order, time is the absolute natural order, mm-hmm. and there's even some kind of thematic links there to a degree with. Disease, with disease, I mean more decay than anything else. Uh, the stuff that was talked about, um, but decay is being... amorous thing, right? Yes, yeah. Which is <clears throat> yeah. This is the kind of bit where all the daedra bleed into each other a little. Mm-hmm. Um, but periote being associated Oop. with balance there he is. and return to normality that comes with pestilence, pestilence, and so on. Um, then that's also the kind of the way of time. 
um in in some ways that the wheel is always the wheel is always turning and so on mm -hmm. um so it's um it's padamaic but it's an ex um in which akatosh isn't necessarily um but it's an express it's it's yeah that that's kind of what that's what i'm thinking um sorry i, I was thinking pa um periite as um the padamaic lorcan and everything that implies mm -hmm. Or not the Padamaic Lokan, Padamaic Akatosh. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. the Padam no, not not Anuic Lokan, Padamaic Ak Padamaic Akatosh. Oh, okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah. There we go. All right, we figured yeah. it out. Yeah. If I get my words <laughs> ironed out, um, <clears throat> with, mm. because, because there is that because that way of overlapping in how they look at things, um, and because if we go to, at a basic level, na natural order and time, uh, they, they all kind of share causality as their root and i don't know i don't know quite where to go from that whether 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 periite is on some on some sort of similar level to akatosh in some meaningful sense or whether it's just an aspiration for him or um or some third option that i haven't considered i'm not sure mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's important to remember, like I, I don't know, I I, I, w I was going to expand a little bit on uh, a little bit more about the idea of um, what it means to be the shadow of Akatosh, but I, I think we've covered it. Um, that's a uh, it, it you know it throws me for a loop every once in a while when people use the word shadow to describe something because sometimes they uh, there are some writers who also use the word echo for the same thing and I'm like not mm -hmm. not the same thing. <laughs> one is sound and the other one is like or whatever yeah. yeah right matthew yeah it, it's all and then and then the young starts up and i'm like oh, <laughs> oh here we go get your bingo cards ready <laughs> yep 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 but yeah. um yeah like lj do you have anything to to add on to that in what sense this is regards in the shadow thing mm -hmm. i guess well, sure I would say that it's it's also interesting that you if you note that even though Perry doesn't have a lot of concrete like actual like text and stuff in regards to him and comparison to a lot of other more popular Deja princes, that he has a lot more subtle influence in other cultures than they do, which mm -hmm. is I think was actually really interesting. Uh, for example, in the Kinds Challenge books, there's actually a Periite shrine on in Somerset. Which I always thought was really interesting, considering that yeah. Oliver absolutely hate Daedra. Yeah. But you know, there's this really ancient, like, like they they describe it as really, really fucking old shrine to Periite in Oradon that has depictions of the Altmer fighting the Slowed. And hmm. then you also have in Craglorn. That Krag makes Lorne, sense. Yeah. Then you have in Craglorn. He. Um, uh, there's a uh, the Nidic ruins there actually have depictions of Periite on them. Which is one of the reasons why I've been doing a lot more research into the knees in regards to the Taskmaster, because when you start thinking about titles like the Para for the Paravana for Elysia, you start wondering if they're actually older dialects or at least older terminology for dragon priestess or cults yeah. in Viridil that were related to Periite when he was worshipped in, you know, back then before Akatosh took over in his place. So it's actually really interesting how Periite is kind of like slowly coming into becoming more of this obscure older deity that people kind of just slowly forgot about over time. That he's kind of he's being more ridiculed in more modern day, but mm -hmm. in the back in the old days, he's actually more actually more of a bigger deal than he is now. Because you even have in that um Dragon Bones interview I did with Shik, where I was asking about if Periite was uh worshipped during the Dragon Cult days, he was like, that should be pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much, you know, that's kind of a given too. And then you also have the um, Shaldor, um links to Periite, and, and Shaldor's insights is all about the immortality of dragons and how he stole the secret of life from Akatosh, and gets even more interesting in regards to that. So, yeah, although the what I picked up from that um, with with the drag with the dragon bones stuff. Was that Periite was more was more the usurper? If you go through, um, if you go through both those dungeons and look at uh, look at Zahn's evolution as a dragon priest, um, she turns from her 
dragon i can't remember his name um i, I really should but um she um she tur she turns from her dragon to worship periite um which i mean per periite usurping dragon cults is a is a beautiful beautiful image um and but that's kind of suggesting that periite is coming onto the scene and uh, late later on um unless unless it, there's a more permanent kind of war going on between alduin and the dragons and the periite cults and so on that's um that's just something we don't hear too much about simply because alduin won well maybe but i mean what if the argument what if it goes exactly the opposite direction what if there's no fighting between these two cults what if they're just sort of all the same thing is it possible that there could be a condition, a culture that exists that does not differentiate between dragons and periite? That's definitely possible. There's another line in uh, Kai's challenge where the Nord character, who's uh, a staunch believer in the oath fates of Atmora, <clears throat> um, says that Kai gives periite the, uh, the, ghost, uh, the spirits of skeevers, and I'm guessing other pestilent creatures when they die. Which implies that Periite at least has been tied with Kain for a, a long ass time in Nordic culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to fill people in on that, Kain's challenge was a writing competition that the Imperial Library ran. Was it was it last year or the year before? I've, I've lost track. Actually, Kain's um, challenge was a was it one of the ESL books that they released prior ah. uh, way back when. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm totally off on that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Yeah, no, it does. It does. It kind of, it kind of takes Perry. It gives Perryite that psychopomp role, um, in that case, for all of the, for all of those lower beings, and it, it extends the Taskmaster out to the lower orders of Nern, and mm -hmm. the lower orders of Mundus, rather than just the lower orders of Oblivion. Now I think about Which it, it's is a Rodan. weird thing for a daedra to have that seems very involved in the yep. mundrial affairs like well, I, I, I i get that you know the distinction between adra and daedra are those who gave their energy to form the world and those who did not but it just seems a little too involved you know what i mean yep yeah no it's, it's well if you want if you want to put it that way um well a adra and daedra is potential the way that I'd reconcile that is that is that the categorization is a one-time thing. That it's about what happened at convention and not afterwards. The Daedra are perfectly free to get involved and muck around after the event, which would explain a heck of a lot of stuff on it on its own on its own terms. Well, especially if you use the old term of the arena, right? So if they're all players in the arena and trying to mm win the game as it were yeah. oh hey look who hey. joined <laughs> hey i'm way late <laughs> <laughs> what did i miss oh, like all uh, of it. just about everything <laughs> <laughs> well 5g least, causes period yeah, i do I stop the <laughs> there you go um hmm. but uh yeah it's like to to sort of backtrack ever so slightly though about um Periite and Taskmaster and natural orders and things. Um, LJ, you said this part that really resonated with me about how um, there was this really old um, shrine to Periite on Oridon in ESO. The thing is, I'm pretty sure it's still established in lore that Somerset Isle, or at least um, the Isle of Oridon, whatever it was, mm -hmm. Uh, long ago, and like there were coral towers and like old small villages that were heavily implied to have been built by the Slowed before the Altmer even got there. Yeah. So perhaps that's not so much an Altmer shrine, but an old Slowed shrine. That was the question that I wanted to ask just to sort of backtrack a bit. Do you think that's possibly the case, or do you have a good argument for why it's actually the Altmer who built that? It's definitely possible. In the book itself, it doesn't really specify what um, culture to built the shrine. I always assumed it was the Altmer because they didn't. I felt like it was a slow thing. They would have uh, specified that. Yeah, because of like slow and disease and like well, the Kanan flu any, and is there any coral or any any yeah. like is is uh, like Kepra Tower in Artam. 
it was the foundations were built by the slowed um and then there there are a number of other at least in lore i don't think we ever see it in game where there are coral structures that that uh were from a, a previous slowed colonization um but i mean if there's nothing to tie the slowed to that then Mm. Yeah. Unless, um, unless though, unless that coral was um, something to do with um, to do with the with the with the uh, the dreg or how you pronounce it, the dreg. <laughs> the, I've I've heard dreg, drew, draft, yeah. draw. They do I've... pronounce it in fungal grotto, and I can never yeah. remember the actual pronunciation. It's dreg, like like the dregs. Yeah. Are... Dreg. The Drake yeah. and Josh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drag. Where's mm -hmm. the new Calpa? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's, okay. Uh, would, I was would, I was going to would, say <laughs> instead of that, it was more like um. Where's the prisoner? <laughs> Because there's always a prison I, break. I, I was thinking it's spherical. <laughs> it was, I, th I thought oh. I get laughs at that. I'm oh. dead that a little bit now. Either way, oh. that was a beautiful little moment. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, James. Yeah. You were saying. I was going to say, I is that? Um, I, I'm sure I remember hearing somewhere that um, that the um, that the the um, the, um, that the drag made um, things out of coral. Um, as well as, as as well as the slow that some of their older um some of their underwater stuff was constructed out of coral so it, is it something from is it something from them and or from a previous calper if we got want to go pro full on tinfoil hat no and that that sounds like getting into leg stuff which oh sorry uh, Math, Math, matthew schroeder has put in chat and ca they had castles of coral and glass according to the 36 mm -hmm. lessons so yeah. I'm imagining like ocean glass where it's like smoothed over glass pebbles and then yeah, like, yeah. like uh, walls of, of you know, like a single layer of ocean glass. Yeah, yeah. but no, the, any kind of connection with them worship, <clears throat> worshipping Perry is going to be super tinfoil hatty yeah. Um, yeah. and unlikely. But Yeah, I'm not uh, entirely sure because the thing that um, – I always wonder because we know that Oradon, or at least first hold, was a was a, was a, was the uh, first place where the Altmer landed in Somerset, yep. which is actually old old arena lore that they kept. And the fact that they have on the shrine itself, it depicts the at least the Altmer or the Altmer fighting the slug like creatures that are that are probably the slowed, implies that they probably built it. And it was built during a war. So, I th personally thought that was always interesting because it kind of implies if it was the Altmer that built it, then that Periate worship came from Almeris, which is extremely fucking heretical. But it's well, also like, hmm, one of those things that, mm -hmm. like I said, well, it, it kind of feeds back. There's not necessarily a lack of precedent because, I mean, we do have you know, the, the, the Velothi Exodus. Who were following Daedra? I mean, what? Who's to say mm -hmm. there weren't other, you know, sects of of equivalent, you know, people instead of Veloth, it's someone else, and they they see Periate as their ancestor or or something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, well, I I, 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 I I have a theory, but uh, James, please, uh, uh, you said you had a theory. Yeah, I I was <clears throat> I was gonna I've kind of had some rough um, head cannon that that um that original um kind exodus for the Kaima was part of um a wider um a, a was part of a wider fracturing of old meres that i would probably date the sigix to this sort um to this point as well that it was as the oldma started worshipping the ancestors of their betters as the pocket guide puts it there was a whole bunch of factions that just said no we're not going to do that so from that split off you get the sigix you get the direni you get the kaima um and so it's possible that we would get some periite worshipping um old I mean, as well in there. they don't have to be popular for yeah for it. It's been a thing i mean it could have just been 
you know, a handful, a couple of families or something, you know, like it, n nothing enormous like mm. the, the Balothi Exodus were. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So, um, one thing though is that, um, it says in, I think, like uh, somewhere online, I'm trying to find it now, but that um, the Altmer are gifted in arcane arts, but it means they're vulnerable to magicka, but they're pretty resistant to disease. And so I'm wondering if maybe um, the reason why Periite, like, again, I see it as being perfectly viable that that old shrine to Periite may very well have been built by the Slowed, especially <clears throat> if it's implied to be super old. Like, that would just, you know, Occam's race, so that would just kind of make mm -hmm. sense to me as the most reliable explanation. But it could also be seen uh, to sort of go back to a point when I was going, you know, well, because if Periite is the god of disease and the Altmer are resistant to disease, then early on, before that whole... Um, sort of societal and cultural shift towards uh, worshiping the ancestors of their social betters, there would have been many who openly worshiped Periite because, well, mm. look, you know, he's given us resistance to all these diseases. What a good and noble Daedra who orders this hell that we call existence. I did, bra bravo, Periite, you get Employee of the Month award. Like, I can see the Ooh, Altmer doing by. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah although, sure. <laughs> although does that necessarily fit with Periite's modus operandi? Because most of his followers, they don't celebrate an absence of disease. They want disease to be everywhere. Is the only problem I can see with that. Okay, that, and, is, I mean, very, that is true. My ever so slight counter argument to that would be that um, people worship different gods for a diversity of reasons that mm. fit the mold culturally see also the uh the orcs of, of orsinium who worship trinimac and they claim that malakath is a false god um the bretons viewing um shior as actually kind of a bad god as opposed to the rest of the men of tamriel except for the red guards viewing him as a good god the Red Guards having a very elven view of the world, despite being men. You know, like there's, I would argue that, like, it depends on the cultural context from where you come from in the Elder Scrolls universe. That would be my only ever so slight, hmm. barely defensible defense. <laughs> no, no, I think it makes sense. And there's also, um, uh, there's also the, the the link to Nurgle, which I'm sure I've talked about before, um, but in for your, uh, in, for in your bingo there. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> in 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 forty k <clears throat> law, one of the things that kicks off Nurgle worship is a fear of is a fear of death and fear of disease. You you turn to the one who controls them to protect you from them, and um, and right. at the end um, at the end they're they're the ones that are still kind of bloated foot and with boils and everything else and embracing the whole thing so maybe it's one will become the other in periite worship i don't think we see a journey of faith of the um of periite worshippers we only ever see people who are already devotee devotees and wanted um, to spread it and everything well, else kind of so the thing about periite worshippers okay. is that while they do like disease, you never see anything regarding like a fear of death from them either. Yeah, I yeah. Think, like the only time, no, true. I think the only time that as you could be like that could be applied is from the um, the uh, the uh, the acolytes are in Skyrim, the the afflicted. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. But oh, otherwise, <clears throat> it's a little bit different than that. In in elsewhere, there's a public dungeon where uh, I think it's I think it's Orcrest. Um, hmm. And it's been taken over, like it's 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 been swarmed with um, periite worshippers or, or something. I can't remember what the actual story is. But the guy you talk to to start the quest to go into the public dungeon, he is a priest of periite, and he talks about how great it is to have disease and and you know to be. Um, I wonder if I can pull up. He's, he's got some of the best dialogue in the game. I absolutely yeah. love it. It's it, 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 I'm very I applaud the authors of that dialogue for not going straight Baron Harkonnen on it. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. uh, let's see. And uh, there's your Dune reference for everyone who's oh, also. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. 
fold in space. That's what we do. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it's unhealthy preoccupations. Let's see. His name is Filbert CN. Oh, yeah, that's the guy. Male pattern baldness and everything. Um, let's see. He says... <clears throat> let's see um oh the sacred scribbles of periite have brought another aspirant to our holy fire would you like to hear about periite he may be the prince of plague and pestilence but let me explain how that's a lot better than it sounds <laughs> 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 and then you you say you you scribble wait where are you going <laughs> no stop <laughs> come <All> back <laughs> And then, and then Empire responds with, you scribbled those skeevers on the walls to recruit worshippers for a Daedric Prince. What better way to find true believers? Since Daedric worship is against the law, only the truly faithful would know that a skeever is one of Perry's sacred symbols. Well, that and the dragon, but I've never seen one of those. Um, aren't you worried about divine prosecution? Those gloried constables? Well, why would I be worried about them? I don't think any of them care about the wonders of Perry or the mysteries of the divine skeever. <laughs> Unless perhaps a judiciously placed pamphlet or two is in order. Um... <laughs> divine skeever t-shirt when? That Dressed up like Jesus with the hair like... <laughs> <laughs> that actually reminds me why the skeever is one of his sacred symbols. Oh, oh here we go. If, if, if you ask what his sacred mission is, he says, to show the people the sickening power of Periite and to bring more followers into the fold, Martine and I want to find a way to prove that Periite is responsible for the flu outbreak in Orcrest. The abject terror will really help with word of mouth. <laughs> um, you know, really, <laughs> intrinsically, Periite worship's just a matter of marketing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Check it's, out these t-shirts uh, we've got. See? Yeah. Look, look, this one's my favorite. Periite. He's sick. We put the four eyes in there. I think that's really going to sell it. Okay. So you ask him what's wrong with you. He says everything. My scalp is itchy. My bowels are irritable. My feet are caked in creamy fungus. Perry has blocked me in so many ways. I want everyone to experience his sickening glory. <laughs> and then and then after you finish the quest, he says, you've done a great service for Perryite. If Tamriel ever falls to a deadly disease, it'll, be, it'll all be thanks to you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So it's it's he clearly doesn't fear these things. Mm, he sees no. these as some kind of backwards blessing. Like, See, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah, and and actually, Baka in in chat is actually straying a little bit close to where I was about to head with this, which is that this is that like the humorous aspects of Periite very quickly lead into Nurgle territory, or you know, yeah, yeah. or, or um, yeah. Uh, clan well, rats. You, and then... <laughs> you have to remember that he's the nicest <clears throat> prince, but he has the worst reputation. He's yeah. very cordial and polite, and he mm -hmm. he's not very underhanded. He basically tells you exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. He doesn't say it in. He doesn't say it rudely. He doesn't try to force you to do it. He's just like, hey, I want you to do this. This is what you're going to get. You can either do it or you can't do it. I don't really mm -hmm. care which, but it would be nice if you did it. Yeah, be a mensch. <laughs> yeah, and be a no, mensch. I, you know, I respect honesty from a day dry. I really do. Well, mm -hmm. they're hard to find <laughs> honest day dry. Right? Looking, looking at some of the other dialogue here, it looks like he was also present in Somerset. Ooh. So, yeah. I don't know if that's related to the Periate Shrine you guys were talking about earlier. Hmm. What well, um, is that? But, uh, but actually, I want to hear from Icefire Warden. He he dropped that bombshell earlier, uh, hinting at why the Skeever is so important. Like, did, yeah, why is tell? that? Yeah. Oh, because um, Skeevers are. They're, they're basically like giant okay. rats, but yeah. you know, there's there's a shit ton of giant rat creatures in TES, but yes. <laughs> they're like the more profound. The ROUSs, and... yeah. I don't think they and... exist. <laughs> 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 but um, no, I, the, uh... what, the only three of us have seen this fucking movie. All right, that's fine. All right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I've seen it. I love it. Come on. Rodents yes. of unusual size? I don't think they exist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yes. Uh, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, I was like, just immediately went to Skaven and I was like, they don't exist either. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> with, <laughs> best, best. <laughs> but with the Skeever, it's, they're known as creatures that spread disease that are infestatious. They, they basically are everywhere in the world. But from one of the books I was reading, they also serve as the food source for a shit ton of people. Oh, they yeah. help people survive. They help people to live. And that's pretty much the perfect um, representation of 
balance of Paragite being a nature god because he, he gives, but he also takes away. And when he takes away, he also gives back. Hmm. So the skeever, sure, is a, is a symbol of pestilence. It's also a symbol of survival. And it's the reason why I kind of... Endurance, yeah. 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 It, mm. yeah. It's the reason why, I like, with Reachman culture about Periyai and the mirror and, Hi- and here scene, they're all kind of gods of survival. And <clears throat> it's just, it explains why people, you know, hold the skeever as this kind of, like, divine symbol of him. But also what, you know, dragons too, because Periyai is surprisingly dominant. He's fucking everywhere his sphere of affluence is insanely large it's the reason why he's described as the most dest- one of the most destructive princess mm-hmm. that exists because if yeah, he really like, wanted to he could fuck up things really bad yeah uh, he's like low-key uh lo- low not not low-key he's low-key destructive yeah mm-hmm. yeah and kind of representing both of the extremes there is kind of interesting as well i was um if if we're talking about the natural order in all of the lovely social implications of that sort of phrase um mm. rep- yeah rep- represent it, representing both um if that very very structured the dragons are big are big are, are big and all the rest of it and the and then you've got the rats at the bottom you have you have the top and the bottom you have a very very clear distinction between the different elements of of how periite works i i uh i have a bit of a heresy about that that gets a little deeper with that okay uh, in terms of you know natural order and everything so i have this i have this thought and literally nothing to support it but (laughs) um sounds like one of mine (laughs) i like i like the idea of periite kind of being like the manager of the jills um he he keeps track of where everything is supposed to be what the natural order is so when the dragon breaks he gives the jills a list okay here's how everything is supposed to be fix it Mm -hmm. and then they go and do their thing um he's like the consultant they bring in yeah uh, yeah yeah like 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 that's like at a at a metaphysical level i feel like i like the idea that that's his that's his job. That's that's mm-hmm. what he does. I mean, one of my my favorite de- um, uh, descriptions I've I've heard of him comes from a Reddit post from years and years and years ago, um, where where someone was uh, describing all of the princes, but in the most like eldritch, oh yeah, ways they could. Great post. I have that saved. Um, and he talks about how um, Periate is like a like a hooded swarm of rats with a clipboard and a pencil and he's writing down just lists of things you mm-hmm. know, here's a teacup here's a jar here's a table here's a dead guy you know like just <laughs> just lists of things and so um like i, I kind of threw that in there so why is he making lists well he's making lists for a practical reason to maintain the natural order of things how things are supposed to be and then when it comes time to you know put everything back the way it should be um, you know the Jills do the best they can. Well, we couldn't get this, this, and this, but and we kind of had to fudge this thing over here, and that's how we got the warp in the West. So, um, yeah, Perry, it's like fuck it, good enough. Yeah, <laughs> we we can't for the life of us get anybody to agree on who's supposed to have Numidium. Sir, I'm sorry, it's just not possible. And Perry, it's like you know what, fuck it, give it to everybody. All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> You get a numidium. You get a numidium. You know Everybody what? gets numidium. You know it's what? You know what? We're out of budget. We're out of time. We got to hit this goddamn milestone. <laughs> uh, I don't want another. Christmas I don't want another, another fucking up, scrum like... meeting. Let's just, just give it to everybody. <laughs> so is there anything else we need to talk about, Perry, before we go completely off the fucking rails? Uh, why spellbreaker? Yeah, because that seems like a weird mix. <laughs> because. Yeah because right i mean it's daedric yeah. i mean it's a uh, dwemer for some yeah. reason well, it's, not, not well, the only, it's not the only dwemer artifact true no because because we got um a uh, volandrum as well um mm-hmm. yeah but malakath's an outcast who wasn't a proper daedra to begin with so that's kind of understandable that you've got yeah. a daedric artifact that isn't a proper daedric artifact to begin with yeah um <laughs> so. suck it malakath <laughs> <laughs> so um what so yeah what Per, um, spellbreaker is more of an anomaly as far as I'm concerned. Well, it, it well, looks like a 
according to the UESP, Spellbreaker is also associated with Clan Rorkin. Yeah. Well, Superior Ice is associated uh, with Drimmer in a lot of ways. So I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't think... I don't think Periite has anything at all to do with Spellbreaker. I think just for some reason or other, he just happened to have it on him. Like, that's it. Mm. It's not any more complicated yeah. than that. He just happened here's to have a, it on him. Here's a spare artifact. We had an inventory. Do you want it? You know, yeah, here you go. Some guy uh, died while he had this. I was yeah. there. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it. He ain't gonna miss it. LJ, just like give us a nice, yeah, LJ, just give us a nice little like hint about something. Hmm? Yep. Well, there's two there's two major, I guess, species that Periite is subtly associated with throughout the Elder Scrolls games. Dwimmer and Vampires. Um, you got Spellbreaker with the Dwimmer. You also, like, the whole existence behind Spellbreaker is that it's implied that it was either forged by Shalador, who was already pretty much super heavy into dragons, considering that he wrote Shalador's insights. Yeah. Uh, or the Rulekin, who are calling a Dwimmer. Or both Shaldor <clears throat> and the Rulekin, which is why they had a fight over it. So, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. And, and then it's um, and um, in Skyrim we also have the fact that his Drimmer, uh, his followers are taking shelter in a Drimmer ruin. That it's implied that his influence has overrun because in that game, Perry is associated with once again nature and growth. He is his shrine is literally a dying tree, and then when you go into, I think. Barthazam or something like that's how I think it's how it's pronounced. Uh, um, there's Thar vines. Thardoms, Bethardoms. Yeah, According to the Imperial Library, King Rorkin had Spellbreaker fashioned for him in his war against Shalador. Ah, uh, interesting. Uh, hmm. It was lost in the final battle and from time to time has reappeared in the land. Um, I mean, that's true of every gauge artifact, but. I don't see how it goes from Clan Rorkin to to Perry, but because we know that uh, Zahn the Scale Caller also used Spellbreaker in the first era. Um, oh, let me go back up. Uh, yeah, uh, after being abandoned by her dragon lord, Zahn turned to Perry, earning her favor and shield before being killed by her dissatisfied followers. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, there's it's if it's not directly an artifact of Periite. I mean, it wasn't made by a prince. It's at least, I mean, maybe maybe Periite was like, yeah, that's mine now, and I'm just going to keep it and do whatever I want with it, sort of thing. Like, it's just a kind of on a whim. Um, but I can't seem to find anything related to how, you know, anything otherwise. Um, Lines then get kind of squiffy because, yeah, um, because um, James super oh, quiet again. Oh, okay. If spellbreaker, um, if spellbreaker gets um, very, um, or oh, hang on, I'll get my thoughts squared up because spellbreaker <laughs> then needs to go from, um, the needs to go from Clan Rorkin to Zahn, or maybe the other way around. Um, cause, um, because it's, it either goes from, um, cause it, yeah, no, no, it's got to go from Clan Rorkin to Zahn at, at, at some point, which implies that, uh, well, that, um, that the stuff that Zahn was doing with it is after the disappearance of the Dwemer, which is yeah. very weird. It means that the dragons, um, means that you've got, you've got dragon cults after the Dwemer disappeared. Yeah. Well, well, and it specifically it says that Zahn got the shield from Periite. Right. So, so I mean, it's not like Zahn picked it up and found it in a Duomar ruin, and then okay. because Zahn was worshipping Periite, it became associated with Periite. Okay. It was given to him by Periite. Yeah. For her. I think Zahn's a female, actually. Yes, yes, Zahn is female. Uh, uh, which, I think, which I think is kind yeah. of dope. But I, yeah. I, you know, Dragon Priest, that's, that's awesome. We also had... Um, Fl Flying Eel has p pointed out something fantastic. Uh, that may maybe magic breaks Periite's natural order and makes diseases yeah. easier to cure. So that's a really that, good point. That explains the attributes of Spellbreaker. Yeah. Um, and why Periite would want it. I think. Quit, quit messing with my natural stuff, yo. Yeah. It also kind. It also vaguely adds. 
something flavor wise to the Dwemer because they frequently get accused of breaking the natural order and all the rest of it. So well, they don't have any respect for it. So yeah, yeah. And so subverting their own um, their own creations against them makes it, it's it's poetic justice from a Daedra, if I can put well, it that way. I've always theorized that the Dremor and Perry would have had to have a lot more dealings than any other prince with the the Deep Folk at all, because since he's the orderer of the uh, lowest planes of Oblivion, basically keeps everything together and has a, gives it a structure. That the fact that they like to explore the outer realms means that he, they will have to come into contact with him sooner or later. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's true, but also I just I, I had this sudden image. Okay of how incredibly likely it was that the Dwemer invented clean rooms. You know? <laughs> like, I, I, it's a weird well, place for my brain to go, but I suddenly have this... I, I think it's because the Dwemer have a lot of those sort of, like, you know, gateways, you know, and uh, these arches in their architecture, and I've just got mm -hmm. this image of them spraying, you know, fluid down on, you know, steam and stuff down onto people, and I don't know. Like uh, decontamination decontamination yeah, yeah. yeah. stuff yeah. um mm. so i i decided to start um exploring a little bit of um god help me the elder scrolls fandom wikia oh sure and why not? it says mm -hmm. well but it says that um Parade is typically listed along with princes such as Molag Ball and Vermina as one of the few truly evil daedric lords in the mortal man and mere sense of the word <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which is weird. And then after it that, does. it says, it is said that the goddess kind gives Periate the souls of Skeevers yep. when they die. And it's kind of like, okay, but why not like other creatures like flies and beetles? Oh, well, we just covered it maggots. because the, the Skeever yes. have a thematic link to yeah. Um, yeah, to, Periate. Yeah. To, to Periate. Um, but then, and I know the black fly is for. Um, we just talked about her, Namira, because yes. uh, the reach of the name. as the Black Fly. Great title. But, yeah. but that, like, what? Where do maggots fit in? Oh, Namira, easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. more. Yeah. I guess guy. yeah, because like uh, maggots are like the larvae of fly. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Because well, I remember one time. I remember one time as a kid, I found a dead bird. I took a stick and I flipped it over, and maggots came pouring out, and I almost threw up. That that yeah. feeling of revulsion. That's Namira. Yeah. To a T. The actual act of of, of vomiting. That's Periot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did I ever tell you guys uh, a story about uh, when I went to go see uh, glow worms in New Zealand? No. Nope. Uh, well, save, it's, save it's, it's not relevant. After it's not relevant. So I won't. I won't tell it. But yeah. You know. No. T t tell us after stream. Yeah. Um, exactly. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to cover about Periite, the Afflicted? No, I think we did pretty master, good. Dudes I don't really just... know what you guys have covered already, so I'm just kind of assuming. You've done well, it. I mean, we, we, we've done pretty much most of it. The only thing that I want to say is that we really, really, really want more of Periite. I yes. think we can all agree to that. Um, it's a very interesting Daedric Prince that is, you know, underdeveloped. And I will bet you if you asked any of the lore writers at ZOS, they'd agree with you. Um, it's uh. So yeah, more more periate, please. Um, uh, to anybody LJ, who's listening. get in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um. So uh, uh. Hold on. Who's next? Um. Daedric uh, Prince. Uh. Sanguine. Sanguine. Ooh. <laughs> this will be fun. You realize and then we, get we to all do have Shiagora to be wine drunk for that stream, right? Hmm. Uh. We oh, I don't know. I'm. Wine I've, drunk for that I've stopped doing drunk streams. <laughs> I didn't. I used to do those back when I was playing Elder Scrolls Online on Twitch, and I stopped doing that. Uh, um, so, hey, hey, sex joke. Right on, Matt. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, not this coming weekend, but the 19th. Which so, is like, is that a maybe, because Christmas and stuff. It so. is awfully close to Christmas, so if we yeah. can't work it out, then I'll let people know in the appropriate channels. Hmm? Uh. Andrew? Yep, and in the meantime, if you do have any questions, drop us a little email yes. at selectivelawcast at gmail.com, and we will mm -hmm. discuss What was the them. question that we got? I, oh, we I just it. saw the message earlier. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we covered it. It was, covered a, it. It was an idea about yep. the Enantiomorph uh, in the Elder Scrolls uh, main questline, in the Skyrim oh, okay. main questline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, cool. okay. Um, everybody wave goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye.